What's going on, Drinking Buddies? Brand new podcast coming right at you, but you know what we got to do first. We got to talk about those things that generate a little revenue for the show. Bring in the ducats. First and foremost, we are brought to you by the Patreon at patreon.com slash Slayer. Get the video versions a week early, uncensored. Get ad-free audio. Just support the show. Plus, there are other random musings, like some photography, some other skits. I'd throw random stuff up on there at patreon.com slash Slayer. You literally can support the show for less than the cost of a beer a month. Mean the fucking world to me. We are also brought to you by our merch store at awd.net slash merch. Got shirts. We have art prints, all sorts of just random. And now we drink in Matt Slayer merch. You appreciate my photography? Boom, it's there. Just the random stuff I've put on shirts, it's there. Wouldn't you be stylish just rolling around in an and now we drink shirt? I think you would. So pick one up today at anwd.net slash merch. Last but not least, the easiest ways you can support this show. First, just retweet, share social media, let people know about the show. There's a lot of podcasts out there. And the best way for more people to discover the show is word of mouth. Just tell people, share stuff. It's that easy. The other thing you can do to really support this show is go to youtube.com slash now we drink and subscribe. It costs you nothing. Takes like a 30 seconds out of your day. More subscriptions, more of the algorithms fed, and it just keeps snowballing. All right, let's get on with it. My guest this week is adult performer Riley Nixon. This was a fun, silly episode. All sorts of shenanigans in this one. Not for the faint of heart, but Riley, you know, talks about her origins starting off in San Diego from Model Mayhem and then where she is now and talking, living in a van, not down by the river. I keep wanting to say down by the river. Just the episode's chaos. I'm a little under the weather, so we're just, we're going to get into it. So sit back, relax, pop a cold one, and enjoy drinking, buddies. What the hell's going on? Hi. Hey. Hey. Thank you for making the long trek across Hollywood. Oh, it's all good. I live pretty close by. It was very convenient. <laughs> You're one of the few. Everyone else is like, I came from clear across the fucking valley for this. I'm so glad that I do not live anywhere near there. Same. Ugh. It's rough up there. And not in a good way. No. No. I like rough. Not like that. Wouldn't want to move to LA to live in the suburbs. No. I mean, I live. I wouldn't call it the suburbs. I mean, I live in a neighborhood. Yeah, but you're on the side of the hill. Yes. Nothing on the side of the hill is the suburbs. No, that's true. <laughs> Even Santa Monica, Beverly Hills, WeHo, which are technically not part of LA, are not really, don't have suburban feel. No, no, it doesn't. It As soon as the houses all start looking the same, I get really creeped out. Well, it's just like, oh, nothing is walkable whatsoever. No. And it's so fucking hot. It's so hot up there. Might as well live in Vegas. Sometimes in the summer. Uh, I would avoid moving back to Vegas if I can. Yeah, I would. I, I would. I would sooner live in the valley than I would live in Vegas. <laughs> Vegas. Vegas has some positives, but not many. I really like Vegas. I don't want to live there. I could live there in not the summer. As long as I don't have to live there in the summer, I think I'd be okay. In the summer, all you do is you just go from your house to your car to wherever you're going in air conditioning. You don't go outdoors. I know, but that's not fun. And your AC bill? <laughs> yeah. I don't even have AC in my house. Really? I don't have any kind of vents in my house. 
Oh, you're like in an old school LA place. Yeah, it's like a 1922. Mm -hmm. That single pane windows, walls not insulated. It gets really cold and really hot. Yeah, that doesn't sound like much fun either. <laughs> but it's so cute, and there's a yard. My okay. do my dogs like it. Your dogs are. It's all about them. <laughs> like I will suffer for my animals. Yeah. Your hairy children. Yeah. So what have you been doing with yourself? <sighs> I'm basically just on OnlyFans. Why? Well, I mean, I guess it's kind of a long story, but... Well, thankfully, we have some time. <laughs> um, I started Porn Porn in January 2016. And then through 2016, through... I guess 2020, basically, I gained like a shit ton of weight. And companies don't really like that, especially when they're used to you being a certain way. There's obviously a market for like all sorts. But when they've already been marketing you a certain way, they don't like that to change. So that was rough. So then I just ended up shooting for myself, shooting lots of content trade. Um, and then COVID... And then I was not shooting with anyone. So I was only doing solo on OnlyFans. And I make more money. <laughs> That's the goal. This is a business. <laughs> I mean, I'm not making anywhere near where I would, what I would like to make. I'm not one of those girls making like the stupid, you know, amounts every month. But it's consistent. I'm not like terrified that I'm not going to get booked at all this month. Um, I haven't had my electricity shut off in a few years, so that's great. That's, <laughs> I've been led to believe losing electricity makes it really hard to shoot content. Yeah, I mean, candlelight's cool. <laughs> so your batteries run out on your camera. <laughs> um, yeah, like I had my water shut off too at one point, and I was like oh, flushing my toilets with my rain barrels. That was rough. That was twenty late twenty eighteen. That was rough. Oof. Yeah, twenty eighteen was not a good year. But now it's all cool. Nice. I'm divorced now, which is fine. Is it even good? Yeah. I mean, I, I was the instigator, so. Um, the actual divorce was very easy. Like, there was no fighting or anything, and there's literally zero assets. <laughs> to, to... We're going to fight over this rain bucket. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's not anything to fight over. Um, but... Yeah, it's good. And I got my dogs. I'm just chilling in my house in LA. Yeah. OnlyFans. OnlyFans has been such a it's such a weird situation what it's done to the industry because it's mm -hmm. like it allows you to be completely in control of your career, but it's like now you're tied to this platform that yeah. doesn't have everyone's best interests at heart. No, yeah. It's a little scary. It's a little scary to think that they could just like rip it out from underneath you. But, I mean, I kind of, ha like, I have, like, a loyal fans, but it's not anywhere near, like, what's going on on my OnlyFans. Um, it's a little scary. But, I mean, if shit happens, I guess I could just hop back on set if need be. Like, sure. it's kind of always there. It's kind of comforting to know that it's, for at least the time being, there if I want it. So no desire to get back on set in the meantime, though? Um... Not really. Um, I am in a relationship. So that's like, that's been all of COVID. So it worked really well because I was not working with any people. And um, and then it was like, I didn't want to work with people because I didn't want to get sick and then get hit. Like, it was just, you know, it was a whole like weird thing. Um, so I've shot with like some people post-COVID or post covid yeah the, um <laughs> big, big big yeah yeah since like people started working together again i've shot with like a few people but um yeah i mean i'm not someone who is in porn like to get my rocks off so i don't feel like a drive in that way um and i i want to be a mom so bad not that I think I can't do both, but in my current situation, like, kind of the solo and, like, I wouldn't, I don't know if I would say I'm fading out, but, like, the 
possibility of fading out seems like a good choice. But then it's always there if things change. Sure. Very sure. If you were to get pregnant, does OnlyFans allow for pregnancy content? Would you even do it? I actually don't know. They're so picky. I know. That's why. I, I, You know, I I have subscribed to someone pregnant on there before because I think that's hot. <laughs> I, I really want to be pregnant and have sex. But not necessarily with, like, I don't have a fantasy of getting fucked by, like, random people when I'm pregnant. Like, I'm, like, grossly like monogamous is like a porno person could be but there's nothing wrong with that no there's nothing wrong with it um i don't know if they allow it I'm, i don't know see if i can google it. and like i don't even know like i haven't even had the conversation with with my partner about that like if he like because it's not just my choice right um but yeah i don't know like why can't why can't you peg someone and why can't you fit you have to keep your thumb out or something like what is that i don't know <laughs> heaven forbid a thumb I know. Heaven forbid. <laughs> good lord i forgot Thanks. i had a drink here <laughs> oh jacket's coming off oh no oh yeah i'm trying to see well there's a there's an article from July 26, 22 on the New York Post. Uh, I'm selling my pregnancy pics on OnlyFans. A Danish blogger is making a fortune selling her baby bump on OnlyFans. So, mm-hmm. I know. I've had videos deleted where I was using, like, I had an Easter video where I was using a carrot in my butt. And that got deleted because that's not allowed. And then I had another video deleted where I was using, like, objects from my kitchen like in my pussy, Not you know, allowed. like a base, like a turkey baster, or like a, I don't even remember what else there was. But like, what? So arbitrary. Like, why? Like, I get like, you know, no like blood or like killing or I guess poop. But even then, but, <laughs> like, I don't know if it's simulated blood. Like, if it's simulated blood, yeah. yeah but like, how how can you like prove? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe only, someone from only send someone from OnlyFans to the BTS. Like this is the fake blood we're using. <laughs> yeah. Well, because like if you were making a mainstream horror movie mm-hmm. and there's no penetration on screen, but you had a sex scene in it, mm-hmm. that's fine to show in a regular theater. Yeah. Yeah. Visa and Mastercard don't care about that. I know. <laughs> so fucking dumb. Well, as of September fourth, twenty twenty two, there's an article on Medium. It says, yes, everything about the pregnancy fetish is legal and platforms like OnlyFans ensure that the creator is not below 18 or a minor mom. That is what... Okay, well, yeah. So, in theory, assuming your partner's down with it. Can make a killing off of that. Oh, I'm sure. I remember Carla Cush did like one, not one, maybe like a small handful of scenes for companies when she was pregnant. I'm like, that's hot. (laughs) You go. (laughs) <laughs> like I'm not here to king shim anyone but I, I I don't get it. You don't get it. Yeah, no. As someone who never wants to get anyone pregnant ever <laughs> ever. You don't want kids? I had a vasectomy last year. Oh hell yeah. Filmed it for my YouTube and everything. Really? Yeah. That's good content. Yeah. How was the recovery? Like 2 weeks of discomfort. That's yeah. about it. Did you put like peas on your balls? Didn't need to. Yeah. Hmm. Like had some special underwear that kind of kept the boys tight my body and like the one little pockets in it like, well it was like just a little sling and that went under my underwear like a little loincloth yeah like <laughs> jock keep... strap <laughs> it's like oh yeah it was like kind of like a jock strap like it hooked around my waist and then just hooked under my balls to mm. keep them from bouncing around because honestly that's only when they hurt is when they moved mm. like i take them out of the sling shower and stuff like ow how big like did like they cut them and then they Tiny. It's like the microscopic yeah. little, yeah. Like, I don't even know what the scar is. Mm-hmm. They just felt, like, bruised, like, really, like, yeah. they were, like, punched a bunch or something. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, during the procedure, go to my YouTube if you want to see it. It's from the <laughs> waist up. You don't see my, like, I've been in this industry for over a decade. I managed to keep my dick off film. I'm not going to start there. <laughs> you just get the Reality Kings, like, reaction shots. <laughs> Pretty much. 
Well, because I'm conscious for the whole thing, so like I'm just mm-hmm. mugging to the camera and talking. But the worst of it was like when you got to my right testicle, like it, it felt a tightness in my stomach, like I had been kicked in the nuts. So. Mm. And I'm like, ah. and he's like, oh, once I told him I was feeling, he just numbed me up some more, and I was fine. What like what kind of pain management did they use? Like, uh, did they inject you with something? They or? gave me a local anesthetic and gave me as much nitrous oxide as I could take. Mm. As I wanted to self serve, they like just suck into the tube as much as you want. And like, I even captioned it during the video. I'm like, am I doing pain management here or am I just trying to get high? <laughs> I wish they would give those options for, uh, what the fuck is it? Like a colposcopy? What is, I don't even know what that is. Um, so like women with uteruses get pap smears and sometimes, which also aren't like very comfortable. Um, and sometimes they come back abnormal. So, like, the cells that they've, like, swabbed off your cervix are abnormal. And you have to go back. And basically, they fucking hole punch a chunk of your cervix out with no no sort of pain management going on. None. You think nitrous at least there. I know. Like, and they don't tell you that's what they're fucking like. I, I think there was this like belief in the medical community years ago that like there's not nerve endings in the cervix or something. They literally take a hunk out of your cervix. It is so painful. I've had it done once. I'm pretty sure there are nerve endings in the cervix. I have some friends that are like swear by like, I want someone to bruise my cervix. Like that's what they swear by. I it's don't because like, it fucking hurts. <laughs> right. Once again, I don't like long dick. <laughs> not here to kink shame anyone, but like, I have some friends that are size queens that are all about like, no, I want my cervix bruised. If I'm walking right when I come out of there, it wasn't a good time. I'm like, I, you do you, girl. Like, I don't have a dick that big. So <laughs> I guess we are never getting oh, together. <laughs> I feel like, I mean, I've definitely felt bruised before, but I feel like more so when it's too long or too deep, I feel so bloated after. Like I don't know why. I, I don't, it's almost like, it's almost like they were hitting it and then it like got swollen or something. Does that make sense? I don't know. And then I'm just like, oh, my God. I'm not a doctor. I don't know. <laughs> like, I didn't even know what the procedure you were talking about before. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, no pain management. Yeah, give us some nitrous. Right. Or, like, actually explain what's going on. Or, like, when they put an IUD in, they literally, like, they put this thing in you and they, like, stab you in the cervix to, like, like stabilize it so they can insert the... It like in, like little pokey things go <laughs> like come on something. I just got a vision of a little sci-fi robot like just crawling up, <laughs> yeah. just crawling in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like imagining what is like on Spy Kids. He has a little bug robot, Ralphie or something. Did you watch Spy Kids? It's I, been years. I grew up on Spy Kids. I was kind of thinking like uh, the spiders from Minority Report when you know they. Hold I his eyes open. That. You haven't seen that? I was like, wait, is that Paul Blart? No. <laughs> nope. 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 Spielberg, Tom Cruise. Oh, I won't watch anything with Tom Cruise. Just anti so anti Scientologist. Mm-hmm. They're within an earshot. Creepy. They're within earshot. I mean, we, we may want to... Fine. You say that I have to live here. <laughs> they come kicking in my door because they of can you. listen to this. They know you're on their side. I'm not on their side. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just because I'll go watch fucking Top Gun doesn't mean I'm on their side. Did you watch Top Gun? I did. Yeah. What, did you think it was a cinematic masterpiece? No. I, I think it hit all the nostalgia buttons that it needed gotcha. to hit. Yeah. I never saw the other one, two, three, one. One. There's just, just one. one. And now the new one? Oh, okay. Yeah, but it's one of those things where, like, whenever you have a sequel that's fucking 30, 40 years later, it's like, Oh, this is a horrible cash grab. And most of them are just horrible movies. This at least was like, okay, we, they're hitting the, the right nostalgia notes to make it entertaining, but mm-hmm. they told an, a different enough story from the first one to make it you know compelling as a film. Mm. Versus okay. like Coming to America 2, which was just horrible. I didn't see that one either. Save your time. Don't bother. <laughs> it's like, I want to support Eddie Murphy doing funny things. I mm. do. I really do. But... That wasn't, that wasn't it. Funny. <laughs> that wasn't it. Like all the same beats. Like especially in comedy, you have to. You can't tell the same. That's why most comedy sequels don't work. Mm. Except Shrek. Shrek. Well, yeah, I guess Shrek is a comedy, but they they vary it up from sequel to sequel enough. Yeah, the second movie I think is better than the first. 
Yeah, I mean they hit they're their, both excellent. They hit their beat with it, like they 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 got it there. But it's it's and I feel like animated comedies are a little different than live action ones. That's true. There's just more you can do with the medium to mm-hmm. play around with it. Like so many live action com- like The Hangover. Like The Hangover Two is just The Hangover One, but in Bangkok, mm-hmm. and they ramped up the craziness a little bit. And then they lost everyone with the Hangover Three when they were like, "Oh, we don't want to do a derivative movie." And then it's a completely different movie. I think they got away with the sequel because of the the audience. That's all they want. They wanted the same experience again, just like slightly different, which is fair. Yeah, I mean, this is why McDonald's stays in business. Yeah, no one's going to McDonald's because, oh my God, it's amazing food. They're like, no, I know exactly what I'm getting. Mm-hmm. It's very consistent. Yeah, although. I'm I'm Canadian, so when I go home, I get poutine from McDonald's, and I think they should have poutine here. I agree, but judging by the fact that smokes didn't make it here for very long, what smokes? I swear that it was a Canadian poutine chain that opened in Hollywood. Oh. Oh, oh. Yeah, smokes poutine. Mm. Founded in 2008 in Toronto, Canada, had a location over at like Coenga and Selma for a little while, oh. and. That's a shame. I mean, I had ordered there fairly regularly, but obviously they didn't make it. I mean, they closed down pre-pandemic. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's time to try again. I agree. Maybe I should open one. Is your post-porn plan just... Mm. <laughs> have your ch- teach your children how to make poutine. <laughs> All poutine babies. Right. Put them to work. Well, that's the point of having children, isn't it? Free slave labor? Yeah. Yeah. That's what my mother did with me. I think that's what most people's parents did. <laughs> Unless you're fabulously wealthy and then, like, the help takes care of the kids. and Yeah. Which, uh, judging by the majority of the rich kids I've met in Hollywood, it's not a good way to raise children. No. They're almost all bad people. Yeah. They don't get, like, they don't get loved. No one loves them. Well, they also have never been told fucking no. Yeah. And that's not good. I think good. that's the second problem. But yes. You, you combine the two. Yeah. It makes sure It's bad. It's bad. I mean, that's part of the reason I don't want children. is because, like, I don't know what values I'd instill in them. Because mm. the values that were instilled in me don't necessarily work correctly in the modern world. Do you have siblings? I have one. Older, younger? Older. And oh. I have a niece, and I'm trying to be cool to her. So when someone has to make life decisions about, like, where to float my body... <laughs> She hopefully puts me in a halfway decent home and <laughs> puts me on a decent body of water. You want a Viking funeral? Why not? I'll be dead. <laughs> Might as well do something like fucking crazy and have a spectacle. I think that's great. I fully support you. I think I want to be a tree. Is that, oh, like those compostable. Well, they have like the compostable coffins, and then they have ones where they like put you in into like a pod. Yeah, it's a tree pod thing. Now, the question is, where do you get planted? Yeah, I don't know. It's like, you think that you're going to stay somewhere, and then you don't. And then you leave your your mom there. And then someone chops your mom down. Right? Some logger. <laughs> makes, makes printer paper out of her. Like, that's the most depressing ending ever. It's like, they make printer paper out of your mom, and there's a print jam. It's not even like a you know, piece of art that's printed on her. It's just like... The, the the network code of the <laughs> printer, like, printed on mom. Like, that's... That's sad. Especially if you believe, like, that your soul remains and you mm-hmm. know, goes into that tree or something. Like, oh ma. Yeah, I wonder if then... Like, I feel like that's going to be more common in the coming decades to be planted in that kind of way. So I think... I mean, graveyards are filling up. So... Eventually, there's going to be other graveyards, and maybe there'll be more like parks with like little plaques, and that'd be nice. Well, it's also the funeral industry is such a fucking ripoff. Mm, yeah. Are you familiar with any of that stuff? Or it's extremely expensive. Yeah, and they try to upsell you like they're used car salesmen. Mm-hmm. Like, why do I give a fuck if grandma's casket is lined with satin or some <laughs> shit? <laughs> Let's get you the best baby coffin on the market. <laughs> right we'll make it look like candy land inside well 
fucking Kiss famously has a Kiss coffin. Oh. Like, why? I mean, I guess if you can, oops, I guess if you can afford it, why not? But why, uh, why make Kiss Richard? I feel bad for people like. People who are trying to, like, fulfill their loved ones, like, dying wishes. And it's like, this shit's expensive. Like, why are you wishing for this? <laughs> like, like, I would rather get cremated than, like, have you buy a fucking coffin. Put me in, like, a, a wooden box in the ground. Or, like, why are you putting me inside this monstrosity? Because that's, you know. I guess how you show that you had wealth in... I don't know. I'm going to turn to soup inside there. <laughs> what a waste. I mean, At least it, let me, like, fertilize the earth. Right? And, like, if I was going to go with something Gaudi, like, you know, just over the top... I'd want a mausoleum, not a cool coffin. Mm-hmm. Like, at least a mausoleum... Something you can haunt. Right? And goth kids can take pictures yeah. in front of, maybe have sex in. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, Absolutely. I had sex in a graveyard once. once. It was bad. Bad sex. Why was it bad? He was just terrible. Oh, it's your partner's fault. Yeah, it was really bad. One, it was a one-time. Well, yeah, you're like, age. don't go, don't go for repeat business on good sex. I mean, on bad sex, like, <laughs> it's not good. Why would you go back for more? Was this bad. is horrible. Let's do it again. Mm-mm. No, no. Bad, bad. Uh, wow. Of course, Hollywood Forever has a memorial tree program. Mm. Newly planted memorial trees that accommodated the placement of two sets of cremated remains from thirteen thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. But how much is a coffin? Oh, yeah. how much is just like a regular burial site there? Oh, at Hollywood Forever, shit. Like for an extra five grand, we'll continuously spray peacock hormones on your grave so they hang out by your grave. We're going to Hollywood Forever's website. To, <laughs> um. They're not giving prices yeah. on their website. Is they, there they a want... coupon? <laughs> Go to the bottom coupon, of the page. Coupon for... <laughs> huh. Limited time offer, February 2023. This is the pop-up. Save o- Free cremation. Save over $2,975. That's such a weird price. Right? Oh, that's only when you buy a cremation niche or a tree memorial. At starting prices of five thousand dollars, you could they'll throw the cremation in for free. Oh, cool! How generous of them. That's very generous. <laughs> like it's it's just a rip off. Yeah, but what are you going to do with the dead? Yeah, yeah. And people don't. I mean, people used to bury their family on their own property, but properties don't stay in families anymore. Well, and. L.A. kind of frowns on it when you bury people in the backyard. <laughs> Gotta get a permit first. I mean, this can't be accurate. Single Crazy. plots. Space to bury a single person between five hundred and ten thousand. and 10000 Like, where's the $500 spot? Like, way in the back? Mm. Up against the fence. Right? Like a dog poo area. <laughs> <laughs> like, in the dog. It's like the dog poop zone. Oh, endowment covers on cemetery upkeep and maintenance. That Don't feels they, like a like, scam. Spray your headstone off from all the graffiti. Probably all the urine that's gonna be on mine. People are gonna pee on my grave. Mm. Do you like that, or do you not like that? Are I'm we probably, happy about that? I'm not not so happy. About oh, okay. That. So you don't like urine? I mean, I like it when it leaves me. Oh, okay. Not necessarily into golden showers. Oh, okay. Plus, I'd be dead even if I was into it. Like that's like afterlife torture. Like I can't feel it. <laughs> it's so cold here. I can't feel it. Well, if you don't use a coffin, you'd feel it. I mean, that would have to be a pretty Soak mighty stream. The there. Earth. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure by the time it gets through six feet of earth, it's it's pretty cold. Mm. And does anyone who's into you know water sports like cold pee? I'm sure there's somebody, but I'm sure, but generally no. On average, they're they're there for the hot shower. Yeah, I mean, like I'd rather it be cold if I'm drinking it. So, I don't. I don't like hot drinks. So what is your technique for cold pee? Like are you just Well, I've never done it. I've never had cold pee. I've only had hot pee in my mouth. Oh. And only one person's pee. Well, have you why have you not gone back to them and been like, okay, we need to refrigerate this? <laughs> Cause then it's not fresh? I don't know. <laughs> like would it get better or worse, like sitting there? 
I don't know. Like cold brew? It ferments a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it depends on what note you're looking for in your urine. Mm-hmm. I kind of like it when it kind of tastes like like ramen, like chick, like salty, like chicken <laughs> ramen broth. <laughs> but again, I'd rather have it cold. Maybe like a watermelon gazpacho. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta make sure, like, you, there's a lot of experimentation that has to go into this. Like, I feel mm-hmm. like you gotta play with their diet a little bit. Like, yeah, maybe it's like, okay, we'll, we'll try it with some watermelon and some pineapple, <laughs> or you could almost do it like a sangria and like put it in a, a pitcher and then add mm. fruit to it. That's not a bad idea. Can't do that on not only fans. <laughs> only fans will definitely not let that one. Oh no! And again, if you just. Or drinking a, a yellow drink and out of a cup, how would they know? Yeah, they'll just they they don't want they just they'll just take it down. But how would they know? Are you not allowed to drink anything on camera? I don't know. I guess I, I guess if you were just like drink, I mean, but the whole point is that you're saying that's what you're doing. So if you well, don't yeah, you say, say other, anything, well, you, then you say it on other social media. Mm, mm. I, I I do have pee stuff on loyal fans. So, go there. <laughs> go there. <laughs> this experiment. No made. drinking pee on only fans or loyal fans. Ugh, too many words. Loyal only. A site with fans. Mm-hmm. On Instagram, I usually say like only hams or like only flans. I just like I'm so terrified of. I had my account deleted for the first time in October. I really thought I was never going to get deleted. Because like, I had that account since 2016, and that's pretty good. That's amazing. I know. And the shit I was posting in, like, 2016, 20, like, you know, emojis covering me, like, sucking a dick. Like, well, you can't see it, think. Right. <laughs> like, that's just an ice cream cone. <laughs> that's just a banana. But, yeah, I finally got deleted in October. And um, Did they give you any reason? Um, solicitation. I guess just from OnlyFans advertising. But even then, like, you don't know what's on. Like, it's behind a paywall. I don't say, like, come watch me do this X, Y, Z. Right. It could be all stand-up. It could, Yeah, it could be, like, fucking, like, gym workout. Like, you don't, I mean. I mean, it could be completely non-sexual. Because in the grand scheme of things, OnlyFans was launched as, like, a Patreon competitor. Yeah. So you could have an OnlyFans that has nothing to do with sex work. Yeah. Hey, my podcast is on OnlyFans. Like, mm. and they're going to demonetize you for solicitation. Like, it's yeah. such bullshit. Yeah, I was with my dad when it happened. I was home visiting him, and we were in the Jeep, and we were driving out to nature to go grouse hunting with his dog. And I was like switching between my Instagram accounts, like getting some work done while we were driving. And then I switched over to the riley nixon which was my old account i'm like what the fuck what the fuck what the fuck what he's like what's going on like i deleted my work instagram (laughs) he like knows what i do but like we don't like talk about it kind of thing and he's like oh my god i'm so sorry like i had 162,000 followers dead which is not like a lot for like anyways it's a lot for him it's you know he's like holy shit (laughs) for that for the greater majority of the world, that's a lot of fucking people. Yes, yes, yes. But for, like, porn girls who started in 2016, like, it's not that much. But it's whatever. It's all relative. It was just annoying. Like, yeah. I, that's how I advertise. Like, that's how I'm making my money. If you lost 200 people, it still sucks. It sucks, yeah. So I had a backup account. So I'm on my backup account now, which is, like, 30,000 now. I don't know what it was at when I switched over, but. But still, huh? It sucks. It's nothing. It sucks, but it's also nothing to scoff at, you know. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, dad's sweet. <laughs> it's like what? What? What was the reason they gave you? I'm like, they didn't give me a reason. <laughs> they don't have to. <laughs> I mean, I didn't want to say solicitation, but yeah, well, they don't have to give you a reason. They're just like, I know, we arbitrarily decided. You don't belong on our platform anymore. Yeah. They definitely throttle everything that I do. And people think, on this account too, but especially on my old account, like I used to go live, like during COVID, I was going live for like hours a day. 
And I, I saw it really helping like OnlyFans conversion, which was cool. And I, yeah, you know, everyone was kind of like lonely and just like wanting to hang out with someone. Um, but I wouldn't be getting more than like 40 people in my live. And that was just very normal. And people were like, you buy your followers. And like, I'm like I really don't. <laughs> like, that's just, it they're does not, not get- push it out to people. Right. They're not getting the notifications. No. Yeah. They like block it from, yeah. Speaking of which, I popped into the live you were doing earlier today and people were just weird. Yeah. What did you see? Oh, just a dude asking a like asking about your tits and like just it was just weird yeah yeah like i i don't expect you to like talk negative about your fans but it's just like dudes be better like there's a live person on the other end of this yeah i i definitely i do expect more from people who don't live in countries with like super suppressed sexual culture it's like, it doesn't excuse the behavior of men from, like, countries like that, but I can, like, understand, like, why they're, like, going so crazy when they see any sort of sensual content. But that wasn't even sensual. You were just kind of hanging out. Oh, I know. I know. Um, so it doesn't excuse it, but it's like, I can, like, understand it more. But when it's, like, a dude from America, I'm like, calm the fuck down. <laughs> like, like what? Bro, the hub isn't blocked here. Like, I if know. you got to get the poison out that bad, go... Go take care of yourself. No, and it's just like one of those things where, like, part of me wanted to pipe up and be like, "Dude, really?" And then I'm just like, "I am not interjecting myself into this." Don't worry, it's fine. Well, I know it is. <laughs> That's why I didn't say shit. Like, one, you didn't really look bothered. Two, it was just like, I'm not looking to just white knight for like mm-hmm. come across the, like dudes be like, "Oh, who's this white knight?" I'm like, no, it's just it's kind of like there's a live person here. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to switch over to Twitch soon. I got, uh, my birthday was, what's today? Wednesday? Yes. So Monday, a week ago, Monday was my birthday. And I got, um, someone bought me a Nintendo Switch. Nice. I'm very excited about. And I, and they got me a game capture card. So I have it all set up because I have a Mac. So it's kind of, it's complicated to figure it out, but I figured it out. And uh, I got that all set up. So I'm going to play Disney Dreamlight Valley. Nice. If you have any questions about it, I was Twitch streaming like the whole pandemic. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I don't know very much about it. It's going to be like a learning experience. But like I'm not a gamer. I grew up with like a DS. So I was playing like um, Guitar Hero on the DS. Like it slid into like the Nintendo 64 slot. I love that shit. It had a little pick that like... <laughs> Uh, and Nintendogs and Mario Kart. And then, like, um, now the only game I still play is Professor Layton. It's, like, a mystery puzzle game. There's, like, six of them or something. Nice. It's all just, like, puzzle. Like, I'm not, like, I'm not going to be on there playing, like, fucking Fortnite or something. Like, I'm not. <laughs> I'm very excited about Disney Dream Light Valley. I think it's going to be fun. Oh, yeah. I mean... As long as you're interacting with your fans, they probably won't care. Yeah. And I think it's going to be a little, I'm not going to feel as like nervous about like, not even so much what I'm saying, but like what other people are commenting. Like, I feel like there's a little bit more leeway on Twitch slightly than with Instagram. Oh, yeah. I mean, what other people are saying. And you can always set up auto moderation where like if people use words that you have blacklisted, you'll just block the mm, just, okay okay yeah, you can set bots to just like these are the blacklisted words and if someone says it's auto mod will just won't even let them post it okay cool okay yeah it's a lot more yeah yeah they've been doing it a minute and like i know uh some other performers have definitely like found some success to just like hang out mm-hmm. on twitch and just watching youtube stuff with their audience that's what I was initially wanting to do because I don't ha- like I don't have gaming systems like I don't like you know like I was just gonna do what I'm doing on Instagram because before they got badges I'm like why am I sitting on here for free I mean yeah I'm like telling people to go to OnlyFans but that's a risky proposition it is yeah it may be a risky proposition on Twitch as well yeah and and on there like I I am not gonna be focusing on that at all 
um, because people can like subscribe and like I, I can make money in other ways. And I just made new merch, which I'm very excited about. Oh yeah, what's the new merch? Um, I have like hoodies and shirts and some cool shoes that I made. Shoes. Yeah, like slides. Nice. Um, but everything's at shopthenicks.com. Um, but everything's at riley-nixon.com. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I haven't even like started Disney Dream Life Valley because I want to like build my character like while people watch. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. So technically, according to this very cursory Google search, it is against the TOS to promote your OnlyFans. I Tec- figured. Technically, it's a violation of promote your Patreon on there. Mm. Right? It's technically a violation of TOS to promote any other services on their platform. Like you can't even technically promote your YouTube. Hmm. But I have been promoting my YouTube on there forever. Yeah. And yeah, I'll be careful. Well, Twitch, unfortunately, is shit for discovery. As someone who was doing it very regularly for most of the pandemic, is shit mm-hmm. for discovery. It's like, oh, well, if you just happen to get lucky to be towards the top, someone people may find you. Like, yeah. YouTube is so much better for discoverability. Mm. But then. On the flip side, it's like, YouTube is so much worse for censorship. <laughs> I was really excited about YouTube in, like, 2019. It's like, I love editing videos. Like, I love, like, I was very into YouTube in, like, middle school, like, 2006, 2007. Like, I was watching, like, Brookers and, like, just, like, weird shit. And I was making weird shit and I just loved it. And then I started getting back into it in 2019. Not weird shit, really. Why not? Well, kind. I mean, I did this like weird like ASMR video with my dogs and like my cat and like food and sardines and stuff. But so that stuff's still up there. But I took so much time. Like I care so much about the editing process and everything. And I'm I'm, like, I'm not making any money off of this. And it's just hard to like, it's like, yeah, I can get like, what is it? Like, you need a thousand followers, but then you need 4,000 hours of your videos watched to even be considered for yep. monetization. Like, <laughs> I don't get those kind of numbers. <laughs> As someone who, with this podcast, took fucking like five years to hit, get into the partner program, I know the pain. Mm-hmm. I also wildly neglected my YouTube channel for most of that. It's, it's why I was like, oh, now that I actually feed the algorithm... YouTube and I are kind of cool. Yeah. I I did start a podcast. Um, I only have three episodes out. And I think my plan is when I start having other people on the podcast, I will be like <laughs> videotaping is not even like a word anymore. Because I'm not like taping, but re- recording or video recording. And that will go on my YouTube channel. But I don't want to be like making like content for YouTube. It's just like. Oh, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fucking lot. I'll just throw that on there. And then maybe, like, random Twitch stuff that's already recorded. Yeah, like, I, what I did with a lot of my Twitch stuff for... I have a separate gaming channel, which has been wildly neglected in the last year. Um, <laughs> whoops. What I was doing is, like, just taking the VODs and then slapping, a, like, an intro on them and throwing them up on YouTube. And, like, some of them got decent traction. Shorts got some decent traction. Nothing like posting mediocre gameplay and just having people come for you in the comments. It's like, thank you. Thank you for driving my engagement. I know. <laughs> like, keep talking shit, please. <laughs> right? I know my game. I like, I'm a 40 something year old dude. Like, I am not trying to compete professionally at this. If well, you are going to come at me like I'm, I am, cool. What kind of games do you play? Uh, I play all sorts of shit. I was playing uh, Apex Legends a lot. I was also uh, with my Twitch community still. We do Thursday night games, and like a lot of times we're doing social deduction games. Like, um, we picked up a clone of Among Us called Goose Goose Duck a couple like over a year back, which is can be fun, but we need to interject new people into it because mm. unfortunately, when you're playing with the same ten people, like it's like playing poker with the same ten people. Like mm. you get to you know, know pe- what everyone, yeah, yeah, you know people's yeah. tells, and <laughs> and everyone just automatically assumes I'm guilty at all times. <laughs> Like, you did this murder. I'm like, I did not do this murder. I never played Among Us or like when everyone started playing it. Was everyone just playing it like on the computer? Like, was this like during COVID? When yeah, it got, were, like, it got really big during like, COVID. With their family, like that are like apart. Yeah. yeah. I just was, I'm like, what is this? 
<laughs> like what who are these little people it's fun it's, it's a fun game like and we were doing it from like mid 2020 like and we still will occasionally fire it up on thursdays but we've been trying to find other things but we had a core group like 10 to 12 people playing every mm-hmm. thursday and it was fun but it got old when like we didn't get new bodies in and like we had some inside jokes that were a little to, little toxic to new players like we had to are you familiar how the game plays at all Someone is it. <laughs> Someone is it, but like you have meetings and then you decide like who's it and you throw them out. Oh. And if you're right, you win. If you're wrong, the game continues. Okay. For a while, we were throwing, anytime someone new played with us, like their first round, we'd throw them out. <laughs> like we'd just call me and be like, welcome aboard and throw them out. And like we all thought it was funny, but a couple of people were like, did not, like, yeah. did not come back after that. Mm. Like we're, we're just. We're being dicks. Bullying. You're hazing them. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit of hazing. <laughs> a little dickish. I'm glad that there's not, well, at least in my experience, there's not really hazing in porn. No. Like, it's not like a sorority. It is like middle school sometimes. Oh, yeah. But there's no hazing. I think there's too much liability. Yeah, hazing. there's way too much. <laughs> Could you imagine going on a set and, like, someone playing pranks on you? Like, hmm. You do that to the wrong performer, you're getting sued. That was bad. It'd be horrible. As wild as it is, and like as middle school as this industry is at times, it's also very professional at times too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people don't get how like it's so. I mean, it's not like an office setting, obviously, but like especially sets where there's like a whole crew, and it's it's so like we're just doing our job. Like, yeah. we can have fun, and we can joke around, but it's, like, serious, and we want to go home. Yeah. <laughs> like, As I've said to my audience like, on a lot of occasions, uh, every porn crew just wants to go home. Yes. And then they're just waiting for the guy, like, beating his dick in the corner. <laughs> like, come on. Or waiting for someone to get out of hair and makeup, or, mm-hmm. like, just get done with the goddamn pretty girls. Let's, let's can we go... The the companies that still require fucking sex stills. It's like, come on. I don't mind the sex stills. I mind the soft core. And I don't know if I've ever, maybe like my first soft core scene I did, but like every other soft core scene that I did after that, I'm like, you're not putting it in me. We're just going to pretend. <laughs> I'm done down there. <laughs> like, they don't know the difference. <laughs> just noodle flop behind me. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't get softcore. I don't get it. Well, I get it when they were selling it to like Cinemax and like selling it to like cable companies. I get it for that. But like in the modern era, is anyone buying those anymore? Are... I don't. I I didn't think so. I mean, unless they're selling to like countries where like they don't a lot of penetration. Wow. Or like if they do have penetrative scenes, like it's blurred. But if it's not penetrative, it's not. Or if it's softcore, it's not blurred. I don't know. Even the blurred, I'm like, what's the point? So I actually have some insight on that because okay. that was part of my discussion with one of my interviewees in Japan. Uh-huh. Japan pretty much goes one of two ways. Sorry for the audience that's heard me discuss this multiple times since I've been back. <laughs> but Japan either this is how we've always done it or we've this has never been done before. And mm-hmm. it's kind of this is how we've always done it. And I, talk, I met a comedian who uh, dubbed or – does the subtitles for Japanese porn. And he's like, it came about because when pornography was still illegal in America, but legal in Japan, the Americans pressured the Japanese to hmm. sense it. That's what he told me. Huh. And then that's just how they've always done it. I just get... It's not a legal thing there? Oh, it's legal. Uh, it's, it's... I mean, like, like... It's a crime if you... If it's not blurred? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they've never... Address the law. So odd. And American porn sites are not IP blocked in Japan. Like, I definitely got on Pornhub while I was in Tokyo. Wow, that's so weird. I've shot for one. I don't. Is it all the same? Like, if I shot for one Japanese company, is it, isn't it like all owned by like the Yakuza? I mean, a fair amount of it. Yeah, I shot for for some some. I don't even know what it was. It's probably blurred. I've never even watched it. <laughs> Can you find it? Maybe. <laughs> it was bizarre. We also, played like a weird game. Like we played like rock, paper, scissors, me and this Japanese man. 
in some other game. And like, if I lost, like I had to have sex with him and then I lost and I had to be really upset and like, I don't want to have sex with him. And then he like pulls out a con. He's like, you signed the contract and you have to pay a million dollars unless you have sex with me. (laughs) And then I had to be like sad while he was having sex with me. It was really weird. Really, really weird. Uh... They were working with Marika. So she was like the one who booked me and she was there. And it was at the house that has like that round sauna outside in the back. Okay. Uh, it was very weird. I'm not going to play your porn in the middle of the podcast. But <laughs> that's demonetization for sure. Uh, no, that that is definitely a solo scene. I'm on a site called One Japanese, but that is definitely. Mm. I don't know. Like, yeah. there, unfortunately, you, there's a lot of hits for yeah. trying to find. <laughs> I know. I mean, fortunately slash unfortunately. I like, wonder. I wonder. Like, were my genitals blurred or not? <laughs> I need to know. But it's just like, okay. Oh my god, this is it. You found it? Yeah. Are your genitals blurred? Yeah. Can they, they can't see my phone. No. <laughs> and I edit this anyway. So, like, even... Like, please, thank you for not making me have to mask something out, but... Yeah, I would. Okay. I'm trying to be. I try to be mindful. It's okay. Plenty of people have gotten topless on the show. It's just like okay, there's post work. <laughs> okay. Well, nudity is allowed on Patreon, so like the Patreon version yeah. is, is nudity, but the YouTube version does not. I I definitely have had a couple guests where it's just like, I, I'm thrilled that your tits are out. Can you please put them away? Because like <laughs> this is a lot of post work for me. <laughs> you can't blur it. I can, but. You edit. You know how, like... Yeah, I know. It's annoying. Having a motion track... I think I have a virus now. <laughs> My phone won't go back. <laughs> Just close, close it all out. <laughs> you know how much a pain in the ass it is to motion yeah. track. Something, especially for like 30 or 40 minutes. It's like... Like pasty is a requirement. I mean, I, w- I would love to give the patrons on Patreon. Like, mm-hmm. You know, whatever they want. So, a lot of times, it's just like, hey... The episode's been cut short. Mm-hmm. Go to Patreon if you want the whole one. Mm-hmm. Have you ever had a nose piercing? No. Mm. I have like a pimple right now. Well, it like hurts inside my nose. Like it, like I used to ha- I had a nose. Well, I had a nose ring that I had twice. And then I had a septum that I had twice. But sometimes you get like pimples like at the piercing site. And that's what it feels like. And it's really weird. It's like it feels like, almost like I got my nose pierced. Weird. It's kind of weird. I don't know why. I but keep I, poking <laughs> all day. I've been like, <laughs> but I think it's because I like bruises. So, like, except on your cervix, kind of hurt. Except my cervix, yeah. I like external bruises generally. Good to know. Good to know. I, I want to. You mentioned your podcast. So why only three episodes so far? Uh, because I just started in January. Yeah, it's February. It's late I know, February. I know. <laughs> so I recorded my first episode last May with my little sister, and then I ha- and then I just did nothing about it. And then I recorded two solos last month, so I have three episodes out. And my two solo episodes just happened to be when it was raining, and I did it in my car. So it's like ASMR, <laughs> like rainfall. <laughs> the second one's like a little intense, I think. The rainfall sounds, but. Yeah, I need to get on that. You do? I know. It's called From Manitoba with Love. Oh, That's where I'm from. Because, <laughs> you know, not to t- tell you how to handle your podcasting business, but consistency is key. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, Dad. <laughs> I know. It's ha- it's gonna happen. Uh-huh. Hey, just getting three out was like, oh, no, it's still an accomplishment. <laughs> Believe me, as someone who produces for other people's podcasts, yeah, the amount of people were like, oh yeah, I want to start a podcast, and then fucking just don't. Mm-hmm. Like making one is a huge step in the right direction. So, do you is your method of like getting people just like Instagram, like if you don't like like really if you're not like close with them. I have publicists that reach out to me on Instagram, you know, Twitter, mm-hmm. you know, friends of friends. Like if I see someone who's like, you know, a friend hanging out with someone who might be interested in me, like, hey, yo, tell them I'd love to have them on the show. 
Mm-hmm. I love podcasts. I'll go on like, I mean, I, there's never been a podcast that I was asked to do that I didn't do. I haven't, I, not that I get asked like that often, but like, there have been like some people were like, can you do a video for my YouTube channel? And I'm like, mm, you have like one follower <laughs> and it's your mom. <laughs> Maybe for like five hundred dollars, because at this point it's just like a Skype date, right? <laughs> and you gotta be careful with that shit, because I, yeah, I'm someone who doesn't say no to people's podcasts when they ask me either, because I don't get asked all that often. Mm-hmm. If you want me on your podcast, ask. I will probably show up. I may be trolly, but I'll show up. <laughs> I agreed to do this dude's podcast last summer. And I did zero research till like the day beforehand. And uh dude turned out to be like just a weird porn fan. Mm. So I made it pretty weird. Did he want to like blow you or something? No, but he did ask me about like specific scenes like mm. that I had nothing to do like, with. Like, I don't know. Like, what does Angela White's pussy taste like? Like, how the fuck am I supposed to know? <laughs> I have no clue. I mean, I know what her boobs feel like on my face, but that's about as far as it's gotten. Yeah, I don't even know that. <laughs> I know she makes a mean Vegemite. Ooh. I never had Vegemite. I, I, I'm direct. The only reason I've ever had Vegemite was because Angela White gave it to me. Was it good? Yeah. It's served with, uh, on toast with butter. Is it like vinegary? I don't really remember. Yeah. <laughs> Earthy, probably? A little, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, it's like you want it to be Nutella, and it's not. It's definitely not Nutella. It's definitely not. But yeah, dude was asking me like just about like specific scenes. Like, yeah, bro, I do not remember scenes I worked on. Like, yeah. let alone scenes with two performers I don't even know. Yeah, it was kind of odd. But I also decided to show up in a green screen suit and a mask. <laughs> green man? Like, oh no no, no. so. <laughs> I showed up as just a floating head. Oh, okay. I, I green, I chroma keyed my the rest of my body out. Just like, <laughs> well, it, it was in a, like with a um, a neon mask, a mask that like had LED lights in it. So it's just a black mask with LED lights. Because you're supposed to be like anonymous or something. Oh, I just decided to be. Well, once I realized what I had signed up for, I decided to be trolly. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay. This was not a requirement. Of no, no, the no. Show. I completely bl- <laughs> I actually completely blindsided him with it, like because it was remote. And I'm, when we get to, you know, before we get on air, I'm, I'm wearing my bathrobe over the suit. And they're like, we'll introduce you and you'll come out. I'm like, oh, cool. I have a, a curtain graphic that I can put over my camera and then the curtains will open and it will reveal me after you guys introduce me. They're like, that's perfect. So I close the curtain graphics. They can't see my camera. I throw the, the bathrobe off. I throw the mask on. <laughs> and they're like, you know. And we have Matt Slayer, the host of the Now We Drink podcast. The curtain's open and I'm just a floating head. <laughs> and they're just like, fuck. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. I'm here to make it weird. What was your background? I changed it a couple times. And one time it was like, like, in space. like a, a flying inferno. It was like <laughs> clouds. <laughs> uh, like, I refuse to be taken seriously. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, and like, I just, I, I definitely made it uncomfortable for him at times because. Mm. He's asking me about all these scenes, and I just point to like go, bro, you really want to know about my masturbation habits, don't you? <laughs> Did you tell him? A little bit. I mean, <laughs> what are they? I mean, they're pretty vanilla, actually. Yeah. Pretty... Do you use lotion? I do. Mm. Has that been like your whole life kind of thing? Uh, it, was, it was definitely dry back in the day. Like, I didn't know any better. Like, that's the problem with America. Like, no one gives you good, like, masturbation yeah. education. Yeah. And then do like, you use do you have do you just any lotion's good or do you nah, have like a preferred lotion? I mean, I'm pretty cheap these days. It's pretty much like some CVS lotion will do the and like occasionally I'll treat myself and use some lube. Hmm. Like, it's weird. Like for masturbation habits, like you know, lotion's great for actual intercourse. Obviously, real lube. Yes, yes. I feel like with masturbating, I mean, if I had a penis. I think I would probably always want to use lotion if I'm just doing like hand to dick. Right. Because then it's like moisturizing and then your hands are moisturized. But with lube, then it's like some of it, I guess, some lubes will dry. I mean, it's, I, I use water based. Nicely. I, I use water based for. But then you kind of have to like go rinse off. 
Well, probably have to rinse off anyways. Well, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Where do you come? Where, like, are you coming into a little tissue? <laughs> oh, no. I'm, I'm a rain Your bucket, ceiling? obviously. <laughs> I have my own rain bucket for it. Oh, okay. You just I just don't want to flush my toilet with it. <laughs> that sounds stinky. <laughs> Well, I guess rain buckets are kind of stinky. Does it collect mosquito <laughs> eggs too? Although they're mutant mosquitoes. <laughs> Three eyed mosquitoes, like <laughs> Simpsons fish. <laughs> but yeah, it's. Well, I think you're the first guest in the history of the show to ask me about my masturbation habits. Oh, I mean, you brought it up first. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, brought... I don't use my hands. Well, I, I feel like the, the technology for. Female genitalia's toys are far mm. above and beyond ours. Yeah. I mean, mostly I would just use a vibrator. Or, I mean, like, humping is great. Humping is real great. That's probably, like... Like, what are you humping? I don't often do that anymore. But, the, like... Why? I would first... I do, but, like, I don't know. A vibrator's nice. Like, a wand vibrator is nice. Um... But, like, then I'm like, well, I'm going to sleep on that pillow. <laughs> like, I don't feel like changing my pillowcase. Like, I'll just buy an extra dirty pillow. <laughs> like, Put it in the corner when you're done. <laughs> like, I'm done with you. You've been banished to the corner. <laughs> yeah, pillows are good to hump, but they have to be, like, pretty firm. I was just thinking that um, I was up from four to six this morning. Um, and I was just thinking about how much I love my pillow. Not because I hump this pillow, but I just, like... I'm kind of picky about sleeping pillows. It's a platonic love. It's not a romantic yes. love with this Well, pillow. it's not a sexual love. It could be romantic. Um, Does your partner know? <laughs> Are you on your partner with this pillow? No, no, no. <laughs> um, like, I don't... My pillow... Ha I like pillows that are feather pillows, but, like, the heavy ones. I don't like when they're, like, airy like and your head just like sinks i need my head to be like held um so i don't hump this pillow i don't want to do that to them <laughs> you have friend zone this pillow <laughs> i think that's where they want to be <laughs> have you asked them i think we're family <laughs> well according to many many pornhub searches <laughs> I think we're too close family. <laughs> I think on the family tree we're still too close. Where is it where is it acceptable on the family tree? Depends on where you are. For kissing. I I'm not Where does that start? Second cousin? <laughs> I don't really want to make out with anyone who has like, I don't either. Any, any of the same genetic material as me. Like I do not either. A, that's a hard pass. Like, yeah, no. But I don't even know where the legality. Like, the... yeah, I don't know what the legality is. I've been binge watching Sister Wives, and that's not incestual. This certain circumstance of polygamy, I know. There's a, that sounds like so much. I've been effort. like very addicted to Sister Wives. Polygamy sounds like so much. Oh, 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 I don't know how. Well, spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> he only has one wife left because the other three left. But I don't know how he he is not. He, he makes you want to like rip your hair out. He's so annoying. I don't know. He must have good dick. He must. Yeah, but they had to stick around before they got the good dick. Like It's not like you day one get the dick. No, but they don't. They have fast engagements. Like they have like a courtship. And then an engagement, and then a marriage, yeah. and that's fat. And then, like a couple of his wives, they didn't kiss before, um, over the altar. And then the newest wife, they kissed before that, and then the wives found out later and were so heartbroken. I would be too. You made me wait to kiss you, and you kissed that hussy before you got married. Mm -mm. But I'm sure you've gone on a couple first dates in your life where you're like, "This dude's annoying." Day one, I'm like, "No, we're not going any further." I've only been on, like, I don't, I've never really been on, like, dates. Like, first dates. So, uh, how, you have a partner right now. How did this come together if you've never been on a date? I mean, 
You mail order him? <laughs> no. <laughs> he mail ordered me. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, like I never went through a phase where I was like, I met like, you know, you meet online and then you like I had I was on Tinder for a very short amount of time before porn. And there was one like date date that came of that two date dates that came of that. So I've really only had like two like like we're meeting the first time and this is like a date and like we're like. So how'd you meet your current partner? It's free. <laughs> um, we met years ago at um, an industry event um, at One Oak years ago. And then we re-met years later through a friend. Um, yeah. You guys still went out on our first date, right? Kind of, but it was more just like hanging. I don't know, like I guess. There but were... it, I don't know. I guess to me, like a first day is like we're meeting the first time, and like we're getting to know each other over dinner, and then like we probably have sex. So like the one guy, the two dates that I have had off Tinder, the the first guy I was like, wow, this is amazing. Wow, what a date. What what energy. And he didn't want to have sex with me. What? Wait, you don't have sex like the first day you meet someone <laughs> like, it was just very foreign to me um did you guys not go out again i think we hung out one more time did you get the goods that time no we never had sex um and then another this is when i was living in a in a van um and the other guy that i went on a date with this was more of like i got back on tinder because i was trying to find like a sugar situation because i was living in a van and i was on food stamps and he was like probably like 45 or so i was 20 and or 21 i just started porn i think like first month or something and he is divorced ex alcoholic with two young kids and he's like i want to save you like i want to take and i'm like oh my god this is not uh, no <laughs> like i know i live in a van but like bro i don't think i children. want like two step kids and well it's also like save your children so, like, i know but i got free pf changs <laughs> all in mm -hmm. so other than that like i haven't really like dated sad That's... yeah my relationship's just like come together yeah and like very close like did you bang your current partner on the first time you like hung out in the no the very first time we met no because we were at like a, a, an event oh like sex never happens at an industry event no but like at one oak at there's a... bathrooms there yeah i mean he did watch me pee <laughs> <laughs> um you watched me pee. I knew it was true love. Yeah. But then when we re-met, I didn't know that we were re-meeting until like two months later after talking every single day and like I've fallen in love with him and he's like, we've met before. I've seen you pee. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. So how long did it take him Drunk. to acknowledge that he had seen you pee? <laughs> well, it was the same conversation. But that's like two months ago. Because we were like into that kind of stuff. Like, because I remembered this, like, I remember that happening with this person, but I didn't remember that it was him. But that's still hilarious. Like two months said, by the way. <laughs> I know. I think he was kind of embarrassed. Why? He wasn't the one peeing. No, just because like. Yeah, yeah. You made an impression. He obviously <laughs> remembered you. Yeah. I the think, one who should be embarrassed. Yeah. We just like connected because we're both Canadian and it was like a whole thing. But yeah. Uh, he. It took, by the way, when you talk about <laughs> living in a van down the river, it took every ounce of my power. Down by the river. <laughs> be like, oh my God, you're what the Republicans talk about. A, a foreigner who comes in and takes our food stamps. <laughs> I moved here when I was 10 years old. <laughs> I, not, it was not my choice <laughs> to move here. Would you prefer to go back to Canada? Well, my whole family's there. 
But um, yeah, I moved here when I was 10. And then when I was 18, my mom and so I graduated high school and my sister graduated middle school and they moved back to Canada. <laughs> they just and, left you here. Well, I had a choice of going back, but I had a boyfriend and I'm, we've already been together two years and I'm like, I'm not just going to leave. Like, I thought I was going to marry this person. I mean, you could have brought him to Canada with you and got him health care. Uh, that's true. He did come to Canada with me to get an abortion. <laughs> Free abortion. <laughs> And that's when I got the IUD. So I don't know the painful experience of getting an IUD because I was already whacked out on yeah on whatever they give you. I was on food stamps, but like I needed that. <laughs> well, obviously, no one's on food stamps just because. Yeah, like, no, of course not. Yeah, and like it's so so what wants to buy a steak if they want to spend all their food stamp money, they can spend it whatever they want. Right doesn't matter so rude they're so rude like now you can only eat like <laughs> processed meats yeah but now people now people are saying like they can only buy healthy foods like they you better up that money they want well you better up that money if you only want no. them to eat healthy because eating healthy ain't cheap Mm-mm. ramen's so cheap top ramen mr right. noodle mm-hmm Especially when it's been recycled into urine. So it was like 25 cents to start with the packet. What's the value of it once it becomes urine? Like, well, it depends whose urine it is, I guess. Fair, if fair. it's his... No offense, hon, but... <laughs> Doesn't quite have the same market value. Yeah, I don't know the shelf life either. I don't know. It's kind of dangerous. Oh, I mean, you have to do some experiments. I mean, the sodium levels... Maybe it could be dehydrated into a ramen seasoning packet. That sounds like some science that's beyond my right. Possibly and it's shelf stable. You could dehydrate pee. See, when I was living in a van, I had a pee bowl because I was living in San Diego and I was in Encinitas most of the time. And you can't really just like I love I love an outdoor pee. You can't really just pee outside on the streets of Encinitas. I mean, you can. You just may have to run. Yes, but like I'm trying to stay parked at night and sleep. So, you know, I'm trying to be good. So I had a pee bowl. Uh, It would form a crust. Class that up. That was a chamber pot. So, yeah, it was. (laughs) It was a Pyrex chamber pot. (laughs) But knowing that it would get a little crusty ring... That could be crumbled into a seasoning packet that could people be. could eat. I bet you could make a killing selling them. Like there's those girls, there's this girl who like bakes her poop into like baked goods and sells them online. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Not here to I judge. I don't want to do that. No. But I, I feel like that's possibly a crime. I'm sure it is. I'm sure my ramen idea is also a crime. <sighs> it's biohazard, right? Is pee a biohazard? Potentially. I mean, if you're to believe the movie Dodgeball, it's sterile. Yeah. I'm not sure I should take science facts from yeah. Dodgeball. Is it only like sterile for yourself? That doesn't make any sense. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we could Google this and actually find out <laughs> if that was just a line in a movie or if that's really a thing. I mean, we have the wealth of human knowledge in front of yeah. us. I mean. Wow. It, uh, I typed, is urine and is urine sterile is the first thing that I came up. I think it's like sterile until it hits the air, right? No. <laughs> the, the first thing that pops up, the bottom line, despite the rumors, urine is not sterile. It's not a sterile substance. It it's naturally sterile-ish. contains bacteria. <laughs> it naturally contains bacteria that renders it a non-sterile substance. I mean, that makes sense. But it's not like, I mean, unless you have like some sort of infection. It's not like dangerous. Like you're not going to get sick. Potentially. I mean, it, you're introducing new bacteria into your body. Yeah. So depending on how your body reacts to it. Because for fuck's sake, there are people that peanuts kill them. So mm. who knows what foreign mm-hmm. bacteria coming out of. Mm-hmm. Hell, there's stories. I mean, this is potentially mm-hmm. anecdotal. But there's stories of people like who eat fucking peanuts and then have sex with their partner who has a peanut allergy and mm. cause a allergic reaction from their load. So mm. That's scary. Yeah. So far, I don't think I have any allergies. 
We'll see. I mean, that would just be horrible, though. Like, you finish in somebody and all of a sudden their crotch is burning because you fucking had pad thai earlier. That's so scary. Or and what if, like, the dick was so good? Yeah, but <laughs> at that point you're like, well, we got to figure out why that happened. And what if they just, like, love peanuts so much? You just can't be together. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I feel like that's an easy thing to give up. Yeah, exactly. Like, huh. <laughs> like, peanuts are pussy. Peanuts I are could pussy. give up peanuts forever and ever. Like I don't, I don't even really like peanut butter. But I don't think there's like, I don't think there's any food I would be like, nah. Great sex is gonna, you know, I'm gonna give up great sex for this food. It's true. I love food, but yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I obviously got fat by eating, so like, I, I love food too. But it's still like. There was consistent great sex, and it's just like, yo, you gotta give up peanuts. Or well, what if it was like you can't eat anything like just delicious? You have to have like boiled chicken and like vegetable. Like that's different. Well, I, I mean, I'm obviously not gonna go vegan for a partner. So no, I, well, I've done that. I'm but sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. In the van. <laughs> I mean, well, I'm happy you're still with us. Like, someone made you go vegan, you're peeing in a pot and living in a van. <laughs> like, that is a recipe for just a tragic end right there. I'm glad you're still with us. Yeah, yeah. The vegan part mostly, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was interesting. Well, so I, I actually am I curious. How did day. how did you end up in the van? Um... So, uh, so I graduated high school and then uh, so my boyfriend was a year ahead of me. So he had already finished a year at university when I graduated. So then I went to the same school he was at, which was close by. But then my mom had moved away. So then I lived on campus for one year. And then I dropped out after that year because I thought it was a waste of money. I wanted to be a midwife and like that has nothing to like, <laughs> like I don't need to it, it was just a waste of money. I didn't want my mom paying for it. It was just like, it's fine. University often is like I, I, I'm a big proponent of university is not for fucking everyone. No, the, the American. Oh, you have to go to college or you won't be successful. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, you'll be a successful, guaranteed to be a semi-successful drone mm. if you go to college. But if you are willing to be a little brave and take your own path, mm-hmm. college may not necessarily be for you. Yeah. And, like, college is not the only education source. Like, right. like you can go to, like, coding school. You can go to, like, tra- like there's just so many other options. Um, so after I did one year of college and living on campus, I moved into my boyfriend's parents' house. And then eventually he wanted an open relationship. I was the only person he had ever had sex with. That was not the case for me. <laughs> um, so I was like, sure. And I think... I'm not really an open relationship person. I think my unconscious thinking was like, it's an out. I loved him, but like we were kids and, you know, it was kind of like a a softer fade out. But I wasn't actually thinking that. But I think that's why I was okay with it. Um, So then I started on Tinder. And then I met this guy who lived in a van, but he lived at someone's house and it was a gorgeous house. And she was, um, she's the ex-wife of, oh my God, from the Eagles. Um, (laughs) I can't even think of his name. The band or the 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 football team? The band, the Eagles. Walden? Wallace? I, I, this is the first time I've never been able to think of his name. Anyways, I was so when I moved in with him, well, okay, I have to get to that. But he was living at this woman's house in Encinitas, and she's the ex-wife of Joe 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 Wallace, Joe Wallace. And it was so beautiful, and she was a painter, and like monks would come there to stay, and she had a yurt, and she would teach yoga. It was just great. Joe Walsh. Joe Walsh. Joe Walsh. Oh, yeah. He's a, he's just a little famous. Joe Wal- Yes. I was living there eventually. Um, but so I was seeing this guy and I was still with my high school boyfriend. And then his parents find out that we're in an open relationship. But I don't really think that's what they're thinking it is. They're thinking like I'm cheating on their son. So they tell him I'm kicked out of the house. 
Meanwhile, I've never brought anyone over to the house. There's no, like, and this was him. Like, he wanted, like, the, and he's like, well, I'm not going to live here either. So then we lived in the Walmart parking lot for a month. And I was working at Jamba Juice at the time. I was a manager at Jamba Juice. And then eventually it just kind of ended and I moved in full time into the van and this was when it was at the house and it was so cool and like he was raw till four vegan and like it was just like a nice little zone um and then I got pregnant my family didn't know I had broken up with the high school boyfriend and I still had this trip planned to drive up to Canada with that high school boyfriend so he drove up with me and I got my abortion and then I came back, but when I came back, he was not in the van. The other guy was not in the van at the house. It was at a different house. I, I got to say, the ex-boyfriend's a trooper for still going on that trip. He is a, I, I love him. He's such a sweetheart. Um, I'm not sure, especially at high school age, how I would have reacted to like, oh, I know we were in an open relationship, but like you're well, having someone else's abortion and you want me to- Two years out of high school, but yeah. His brain was still... So he was like 20, <laughs> but yeah. Still at 20. Yeah, or 21. Yeah, at 21, I definitely was a dickhead. Yeah, at, he was a sweetheart. Yeah, I was definitely a dickhead. Like, I, in retrospect, I feel like such an ass about it, but like at the time, a girl I was dating at 21, like, we had to go to a funeral, and she wasn't wearing all black, and I kind of freaked out about it. Mm. Like, I don't feel this... Way. And then, yeah, it was like, I was a dickhead. So the idea of, like, some... In the grand scheme of things, that wasn't that serious. Something as serious as like, hey, someone I was in love with, I'm going to go take yeah. to have an abortion that is definitely not mine. Yeah. Is a lot. Yeah. Good on him. I mean, it might be easier that it's not his. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I really appreciate it. Like, because no one, my family didn't know. So it was like nice to have someone with me that like knew what was happening. Oh, for sure. And I'm just saying like, good on him. Like, yeah. I know he's a great guy. Do you know where he is now? Uh, not really. I mean, still San Diego ish area. We don't talk. I don't know. I think he's fine. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Never curious to check in. I like. He doesn't really post much on social media. I think he's just working. I don't know what he does. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, people drift away. It's fine. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm just always curious when, like, oh, hey, we went through kind of some shit together. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. We just. It happens. Kids. Like, and the, but that's the thing. Like, people aren't necessarily meant to be in your life forever. Yeah, yeah. Like, th- that's the problem with social media and everything. Today is in our parents' generation, when you separated from someone, they legitimately could be out of your life forever. And yeah, I do find it a little weird when people keep exes in their life. I know there's like certain circumstances where like that happens, but like when it's like. All of your exes just told in your life? Like, that's kind of weird. <laughs> uh, I may be wrong here, but I'm pretty sure I read an article that's a sign of psychosis. Mm. To keep them. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I'm going to try to Google something that will prove me right. <laughs> I can't well, remember yeah. where I left off. Well, so you guys went up to Canada. Yes. Got the abortion. Came back, he, the van was at a different house. Nothing like the other house. It was still nice. It was fine. They were sweet. They had a bulldog named Cash. And eventually they moved and we had to move. And then we were on the streets. And that's when shit got, like, rough. And that's when, yeah, things were not fun. <laughs> How long were you in the van? Um, Almost a year. And that's when I was I started nude modeling when I was in the van. So that's I was paying for everything. He was doing nothing. Oh. Uh, that was suitcase, fun. A suitcase, suitcase pimp with a van. Neat. <sighs> um, but also like just yes, I was supporting him, but he would had nothing to do with my work. Like it's not like he was like, when are you gonna like you yeah. know, like it, it didn't have that kind of vibe, but I was still definitely like paying for all his organic bananas and <laughs> he'd like have a ten banana smoothie in the morning and we have to find Somewhere to plug the blender. <laughs> like, <laughs> this isn't even a nice van. What the fuck? No, this was a um, 1970. No, that's not true. It was a Dodge Ram van. Oh, it was so... blue, and I had like a 
queen size bed in it. Um, oh. I made a video to like sell the van at one point, like a month before I moved to LA, and I made this like funny video. I was like, "Fancy keyless ignition," but it was actually like you needed pliers to like, <laughs> <laughs> like grab onto this little thing to like turn the car on. So are there you, were so, no you even own the van? He didn't have keys to it. He ha- he yeah he he owned the van. Um, it, yeah, but yeah, the other streets were hard. I had an Oldsmobile that I would like commute with, like if I had a shoot. Um, but people on Model Mayhem don't like paying very much or at all. I would not do anything for free. Um, or should you? No, I cu- I couldn't. I mean, that was like the thing that you should do some free shoots, to, like build your portfolio. But like, I could not afford to. Um, but then porn like changed everything i was scouted on model mayhem you shot for ba a bunch of times right for who burning angel yeah uh yeah uh i don't know if it was a bunch of times a couple times at least and then joanna directed a penthouse movie that i was like the main thing in, but yeah <laughs> I, don't know. I i remember you know you from old school ba so like mm. Apparently, I'm not as up on, like, how many people were shot for... I mean... No. <laughs> then again, I could be forgetting, too. Also, unless you are Joanna Angel, everyone who shot for BA only shot for BA, like, so many times. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was the buzz cut days. Yep. Mm-hmm. Burning Angel was my in, too, so... Yeah. What year did you get in? 2010, 2011. Okay. Yeah. Like, ben, sorry to the audience that has heard this so many fucking times. I haven't. Exactly. Um, when I was living in Chicago, like there were like five, six performers that worked for that worked for BA that all lived in Chicago, and they started doing a Burning Angel night like at the bar I used to go to. Oh, cool! Like for screenings or something? They would, or just like put like it. It was kind of playing in the background, and yeah, like and it was just a bar I normally went to anyway. So it was like, oh, this is fun. And yeah, I just ended up meeting people and like networking and started off doing like security for people on like feature gigs and shit like that. Oh, cool. So like, uh, you know, all those performers introduced me to people and then I did, you know, kind of snowballed from there. And here we are. Here we are. Quit a corporate job of 10 years. And <laughs> what was your corporate job? I'm kind of corporate. I, I worked for an armed security company like doing armored cars, like, you know, bank trucks. Okay, yeah. Spent a number of years on the trucks, actually a little more money than I was in management for like the last four years I was there. It was miserable. Mm. And especially because the like the last four years I was there, I was also on weekends, a lot of times like on the road with features and shit like that. Mm. It was like, I hate, <laughs> I hate this job. <laughs> Going Being a roadie with features is fun. Yeah. Sometimes. sometimes was, that Did was that a, pay well? No. The, uh, the gig or the feature? Uh, the feature. Mm, feature work, not so much. But, like, more enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I'm a big film nerd. Mm. And I wanted to make movies. Mm. Like, I got into this because, like, I wanted to make fucking movies. Like, I wanted to make stuff. I never met anyone who did mainstream film. I met a bunch of people who did porn. Mm-hmm. So I went, oh, this is my opportunity to try to make stuff. What do you want to make? Oh, I have, I have a lot of ideas of like porn stuff that I, I just never followed through on. Mm-hmm. Like I, mm-hmm. I bought a bunch of domains over the years. Like, Is there any like non-porn stuff you want to do? Oh yeah, like, like film-wise. Oh yeah, no, I had a bunch of ideas for like mainstream film stuff. I at one point thought I could be a fucking writer. I have horrible ADD, <laughs> ADHD. <laughs> that means I cannot be a writer. Like. <laughs> I, I'm a bit of a perfectionist at times, and like I, when I was trying to do screenwriting before like any of this, like I would keep writing the same scene over and over again because mm. I'm just like I'm not happy with this, and it's like oh no no every fucking screenwriting book is like finish your first draft, Diddy, mm-hmm. you dummy, mm-hmm. then go to revisions. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, but no, this is nowhere. Yeah. yeah, it just got fucking nowhere. I just, yeah. and then you know once I started meeting people in porn, I started converting those ideas into like. Porn ideas. Mm-hmm. And I still didn't actually get on most of them. I also didn't realize how much I didn't know about actual filmmaking yeah. at the time. 
it's one of those things where like, oh, I I could do like filmmaking's not that good. <laughs> I didn't know what I didn't know. It was like full on Dunning Kruger effect. Like, mm-hmm. like I could film. I used to like ten years ago be like, I could film that shit, bro. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing with the camera until about three years ago. Like, oh yeah, I can. I could probably get a decent composition yeah. if everything's on auto. Yeah. No, I'm like composition is my jam. Like <laughs> I can visually like set, you know, but like, I don't know how things turn on and like what's formatting a card. I don't know what that means. So, as fucked up as like the pandemic was for ev- everybody, the pandemic for me, because it's like the first time in, you know, my being a creative where I didn't have to fucking worry as much about like, grinding out fucking menial jobs or whatever bullshit i could just concentrate on content creation mm. and all this i my skills got so much fucking better in the mm-hmm. last three years mm-hmm. it's just like oh hmm I, i'm just spending all this time learning shit it's almost like when you take time to learn a skill well, you learn a skill <laughs> right but it's one of those things where like as a working adult especially one who had a fucking very demanding full-time job mm. and then was still doing other jobs on the side like and didn't even know what fucking questions to ask yeah it was you know i just never took the time mm-hmm. and it was just like oh hey i'm stuck at home all fucking day well time to learn shit mm-hmm. and like i don't fault anyone who was like you know what this pandemic's on i'm going to take unemployment Hell yeah. I fault people that are like, I'm just going to sit around and watch Netflix all fucking day. Like, that didn't take the opportunity to better themselves in some way. I don't know. I, I kind of disagree. I feel like, I guess it depends on the person, but like, some people are so, like, the way this country works and capitalism works is you're such a cog in the fucking machine that you don't get time to do nothing. Well, I did plenty of nothing, so, too. Don't worry. No, I know, but it's like some people, like, some people had to learn how to do nothing. Like, they like they could not, like, allow themselves to do nothing. Oh, I, I, I hate think to that break. that was a valuable lesson. I hate to break, too. I still feel, even during the, all of that, would feel guilty when I was doing nothing. Yeah. Like, I, I have weird, workaholic, mm-hmm. bad tendencies. But... It's also one of those things like if you didn't do anything to try to improve yourself, you're just basically got a break from being a cog in the machine. Mm-hmm. At least, you know, if you tried to improve your lot a little bit, you might be a cog in a machine you like a little better. That's true. That's true. I mean, I, unless you're independently wealthy, we're all going to be stuck being cogs to a degree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's a sad state of American life because if I decide, fuck it, I don't want to be a cog today, <laughs> I'm going to starve to death. Yeah. It, the government's going to be like, coolsies, your next of kin's going to be stuck with the bill to you know, do whatever with my body. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's why people are pushing um, anti-abortion stuff because they're losing all their cogs? Because people are having less kids? That's I mean, what people are saying. It's entirely possible. It's entirely possible. They're losing I, their workforce. <laughs> but automation is going to take care of a lot of that shit yeah. in the future. It, it's very short-sighted if you're like, I'm going to push anti-abortion stuff because we're losing cogs. Because <laughs> automation is going to take that cogs. And then you're going to prove – then you're going to have exactly what happened during the pandemic. Like, hey, guess what? Now that people have free time to actually pay attention to what the fuck's going on, mm-hmm. they're going to go get motivated to do shit about it. Mm-hmm. So when automation takes all these people's jobs – they're going to have the free fucking time to go fucking do something about the other fucking injustices in the world. Mm-hmm. I mean, hats off to the fucking French, because the French will just be like, something's wrong. We're throwing the fuck down. <laughs> America's like, there's, there's new shit on HBO. It's true. There's good stuff. Yeah, there's great stuff on HBO. <laughs> but it probably is what stops a lot of Americans from like, how did our parents' generation in the 60s and 70s fucking protest so much shit mm-hmm. versus we are so much more aware of injustices than they were? Yeah. But we are, at least anecdotally, 
so much less active about doing shit about it. Because mm-hmm. we are fucking distracted. Yeah, that, and I think like the people that you're pro- like people are protesting too, like care. Like they're like, no, it's we're done protesting. Why are you protesting? Like, there's nothing to protest about. Like, that's not what I think, but oh, like, yeah. yeah, I think. Like, what are you complaining about? <laughs> Because there's a lot of shit wrong. Everyone has rights. <laughs> like, quit complaining. There's a lot of shit wrong. Yeah. The fact that, like, hey, if you are not a well-performing cog in the machine, you will just get ground into dust. Yes. There is no fucking safety net. No. It's terrifying. And I talk to people about this all the time. They're like, well, there should be, like, I don't want to pay for someone else's fucking insurance. Like, I do. Well, I try to pitch it to people in a selfish fashion. Like, with your health care being tied to your fucking employer, your employment's not guaranteed, man. Yeah. That shit could change on a dime. Someone could just be like, you know what? Hey, guess what you're laid off? Your great health insurance? Gone. Your kids may not get fucking great health insurance from an employer. Mm-hmm. Why would you not want to pay into a system that takes care of them Yeah. if they don't happen to be as lucky as you with their employment situation? Like you're, if you're paying into health care for a for-profit company, you're already paying for other people's health care. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just done shittily. Like Right. It's like, oh hey, we're gonna funnel some profits to the top and then maybe yeah. provide some health care. Yeah, like I get so like I'm from Canada and there's like free health care. It obviously doesn't cover everything, which is you know, I think it should cover everything. But like, like what doesn't it cover? Um, I think just recently it started covering like eye doctor stuff. So before that was like an additional thing, like you would pay <laughs> extra for like if you needed you needed eye doctor insurance. That is like also ridiculous. Like it this is. isn't part of my body. These aren't I part know, of my body. I know. Like, and why? dental too is like a little bit different. But like it's so like it's so nice knowing that you can just walk into a clinic like I have, I don't know, I have a fucking yeast infection or I ha- like or whatever. And like, they'll see you. They'll write you the prescription. Like you pay for your prescription. But like you're not paying 80, a hundred dollars to go see someone. Well, and one of my friend's dads who's up in Canada, like, Canadian government helped him with end-of-life stuff. Mm. The U.S. government, like, even if you have health insurance, like, I don't think you're getting hospice care out of your fucking insurance. Mm-hmm. Or definitely not Medicaid in any great way. Like, yeah. cool. Hey, I've been a cog for so long, and now I get to die a horrible, depressing death. <laughs> it's so fucked. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so fucked. It absolutely is. Yeah. And it's all the fault of World War II. Mm-hmm. I recently found this out is part of the reason the American healthcare system is how it is, is they froze wages during World War II in America. Hmm. So employers to entice better employees because wages were offered better health care. And that started with the healthcare industry. What was it before? Probably just. You just yeah. go and you like just die. Five do- oh. <laughs> like- probably, it's America. You probably just died. <laughs> like, why do you think Americans had like 12 kids? Like some of them weren't making it. Yeah. You need kids to become parents when you died at 30. Yeah. Yeah. Eee. Eee. Well, and that's the fucked up part is like in the grand scheme of things, we are probably living in the easiest point of human history to be alive. Of course. Of course. But. But. <laughs> there's still some problems. Yeah. Like people should not be going bankrupt because their kid has fucking leukemia. Right. Like, or what the fuck? Or a situation where, hey, if I commit a crime and go to prison, I'm going to get better health care as a prisoner mm. than I would as, like, on the street. Mm-hmm. That's probably not the best way for a society to... Mm, no. No. Probably not. Probably not. Yeah, no. And then people just, like, don't go to the doctor. Because, it's, like, I'm even, like, I think, like, if something really bad happens to me... I'd probably get an Uber. I'm not calling an ambulance. Right. That I can't afford an ambulance. <laughs> and that poor fucking Uber driver on top of it. He's like, if you're squirting blood. 
I mean, I'd rather tip the Uber driver really well. But the problem is, at that point, <laughs> he might be out of working for the evening because your fluids are all over the inside of his car. Well, I mean, it's fucked for everybody I'd, involved. Like, put on some sort of like hazmat suit and keep it all contained. But, I want to be, you know. But it's fucked for everybody involved. Like, yeah. oh, the Uber driver's like, oh, hey. If I cancel this ride, I make nothing. I'll drive myself. <laughs> but that's not how it should be. <laughs> no, it's fucked. It's so fucked. But, you know, where else do you fucking go? I know. It's like, oh, if you don't like America, leave. Leaving's fucking expensive, bro. Oh, so expensive. And if you're an uneducated American, most places do not want you. Yeah. I know, I've looked. You can see yourself uneducated. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I, I don't have... A, I'm not a day of university. Yeah. Eh, eh. I, I had the mistake of being a working IT professional before the dot-com bubble burst. Like, I was working in IT departments in high school. Mm. So, it's still educated. Not it's according not to foreign... Not according to foreign governments. Mm. Mm. They want to see four-year fucking degrees. Mm. And, I do not have that. You know, I was like, oh... Going to a university would be a drawback on my IT career. They're not up on current technology. Mm. Little did I only worked in IT till like 2002 and then started carrying a gun and delivering money for a living. <laughs> but no, it's 2003. Sorry. I was delivering pizzas shortly, shortly before that. For who? Fucking some uh, mom and pop Italian place on the north side of Chicago. Literally like. I was working for a high-speed internet inst installer. That company went out of business. Uh, me and two friends decided that we were going to start our own consulting company. One of the friends brought in someone who's going to be handle the money and business end of things. Those guys formed a company and just had us working it. We had no <laughs> no equity in the business, but I was fucking twenty. I didn't know any fucking better. Mm -hmm. But after six months of not getting fucking paid and burning through my savings, I. It's like, fuck this, I'm out. Like, I can't continue to work this business and not make money. I was delivering pieces at night on top of working mm. for this company during the day because I like I thought I was a shareholder in this business. Yeah. I was not. Apparently not. No. Yeesh. And, yeah, so I continued delivering pizzas more than that. And then my former boss at one of the uh, installation companies or for was working for the armored car company, like, at night. And he's like... Yo, you'll get health insurance. It'll pay better than delivering pizzas. And then I had to negotiate with the, the hiring manager to actually get hired. Because mm. he saw my resume and it was like all IT experience. He's like, yo, man, if I hire you, are you just going to quit? <laughs> He's like, you got to promise me you'll give me at least six months. Mm. And then I outlasted his ass by years. <laughs> well, and because... That that was a very interesting place to work because the inmates were kind of running in the asylum at points. Okay. The upper management was pretty much like, we'll look the other way on a lot of procedural violations as long as you guys get the job done. Okay. So there was a lot of playing fast and loose with the rules to get the job done. Mm. And they tolerated me being a fucking monster. Like, I was just a colossal prick. In my, in my early 20s, because they started paying us about six months after I started on the job. Like, you got paid by the amount of stops you did. No hourly. Like, faster you got the job done, essentially more dollars per hour you made. Mm -hmm. If you couldn't keep pace with what I wanted to, how I wanted to make my dollars per hour, oh, I let you know. I was not... <laughs> I was like 21, 22, full of testosterone and yeah. just pretty fucking toxic. You know, as, a, as an older, wiser man, it's like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> ooh. I may have been a bit of a prick there. <laughs> you know? You lasted there a long time. Yeah, because I, I got results, so they put up with my bullshit. <laughs> like, I, I told the story on an episode recently, like, I literally kicked somebody off a truck, like, in front of a supervisor, like, just not, not even remotely politely. Like, she showed up technically on time. I told her, like, hey, we leave at the start time. Like, we, we start time is late. Mm -hmm. And she showed up at the start time. I fucking wasn't having it. I'm going to get the fuck off my truck. 
And the supervisor's like, you can't talk to her. I'm like, that. then you tell her to go do the fucking route. Get me someone else. <laughs> like, it's just a prick. It's a colossal fucking prick. And they were okay with it because you were getting results. Yeah. America. And then what made you leave? Oh, because it's fucking miserable. Yeah. You just decided to leave. You didn't have, like, something else that was better lined up? Or... This! <laughs> Uh, basically, you see? <laughs> basically, what happened was, um, twenty yeah, yeah, twenty eleven. Um, some people in the industry were like, "Hey, we're starting up production in Vegas," and I went, "Cool, They're like come west, we'll have work for you." I, because I worked for a national company, I was able to transfer my gig out to Vegas because I'm like, I, I don't know these people all that well, mm-hmm. but. I definitely went out of Chicago. I, like, I was on a bar stool at least five nights a week closing bars. Like, it was just, like, unsafe amount of partying. Like, mm. I drank a lot, but it was also just, like, I'd close a 4 a.m. bar and then be at work at 7 a.m. with, with a gun on my hip. How? A lot of my routine in those days was oh, yeah. I started at, like, 6.30 in the morning. But I'd be off by like two o'clock in the afternoon, two mm-hmm. three o'clock in the afternoon. So it'd be like, roll into work, immediately fall asleep on the truck. Like we had an hour drive from base to our first stop. So like, just get the shit in the truck and out. Yeah, power nap. Power nap. Get through the day. My partner used to laugh. He's like, "What's what size monster I showed up with is like how bad of a night I had." <laughs> this is the point where like they used to sell like. Oil can 32 ounce monsters. <laughs> and if I rolled in one of those, he's like, oh, rough night, huh? You weren't drinking four locos in the morning? <laughs> no, they tend, to, they tend to front of you actually drinking alcohol when you have a gun on your head. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so one of my bosses who followed me on Twitter is like, I had to unfollow you because I cannot know what you are fucking doing at night. And fucking make it through the day. The minute I got off work, go home, fucking go to sleep. Mm. Wake up like, Eight, nine o'clock at night, go eat something, go out to the bar. Stay at the bar till four. What were you drinking? Whiskey. Just whiskey. Those days was a lot of Jack and Coke. Mm. I even had the, the GM of like the bar where I met all the Burning Angel folks ask me one point, like, Matt, what do you do for a living? And I told him, he's like, the fuck, you close this bar like five nights a week. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> I'll do what I want. It's just, you know. That sounds like burnout waiting to happen. Oh, I, I was burned out. Like, because it was just like, <laughs> because I was such a colossal prick, they tolerated me. Like, I was never going to move up. They're like, well, you get shit done. So we'll put up with you. Yeah, we'll keep you right here. <laughs> right. But every, anytime I tried to, like, move move up while I was still based in Chicago, just did not happen. Mm. Like, I, I got directly asked if I wanted to be a supervisor on a couple different occasions. And then when I went to interview for it, they're like, nah, <laughs> nah, nah. And in, in retrospect, they were right. Yeah. I did not know how to, I did not have the people skills to be managing people at that point. Mm. Like pretty much if you worked on a truck with me, either we were cool or I bullied you. That's pretty much. Ha- like, There's no middle ground. No. You were a bully. Well, it's like, no, you're negatively affecting my income, so <laughs> fuck you. Yeah. It was, it was just bad. It was, yeah. it was. And then when I got out to Vegas, like, they, the Vegas folks, like, I was much cooler with because I, I felt like I was one foot out the door, so I was a lot less, like, on edge about, like, mm-hmm. wanting to – just how I acted. I, like, I acted like – I mean, I got the job done, but I also wasn't, like, a stress monster – about getting the job done. Yeah. Like, cause I was like, I'm, I'm, as soon as this production starts, I'm out of here. Mm-hmm. And they promoted me to fucking management. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> so that resulted in four years on the fucking road, like traveling full fu- fucking time, plus roadie gigs, working conventions, shit like that. And it was, that was insane burnout. Like being a road warrior, a full time road warrior for a little while was fun. And then it wasn't. Yeah. I used to refer to it as I used to guest star in my own life. <laughs> like, I'd get back to Vegas and see my, you know, see friends and be like, oh, I have no idea what you guys are talking about because I've been on the road for the last six months. Like, 2014 was my last year there, and 
at 300 Knights of Marriott properties. 149,000 miles flown. Oh, my God. No, thanks. Yeah. I don't think I could do it. Oh, uh, it's, it's fun for a while. Yeah. I promise you it's fun for a while, especially when it's like, oh, they're not watching me very hard. And company policies, I can fly home on weekends. So I just flew wherever I wanted on weekends. That could be fun. It, it is for a while. <laughs> Believe me, it is for a while. Like, oh, I got friends in New York. I'll bounce into New York City for a weekend. Yeah. Oh, I got I got friends in Ohio. I'll bounce to you know, just go wherever the fuck I wanted for, you know, the weekend. Gets old, crashing on people's couches and yeah, like oh hey, my stuff's in storage the last year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not home. Well, why would I pay rent on a place? Yeah. So it's. How long have you been here? I've been here since I moved to LA at the end of 2014. Okay. Like, it was one of those things where, like, though I was based in Vegas, Vegas never really felt like home because mm-hmm. part of the travel and part of it was just like, at the time, a lot less of the industry was in Vegas. And the industry that was in Vegas was mostly older performers that were established with families. And I. I Still have the desire to go out and be a shithead sometimes. It's like, I love you guys, but I understand you have kids to go home to. And, like, mm. you don't want to go out and tear it up. And, I, like, I, I'd like to go tear it up a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Do you I, tear it up? On occasion. <laughs> Where do you like to tear it up? I mean, it's Hollywood. I mean, I, <laughs> is it <a> lost property? <laughs> Where is that? Hollywood and Vine. Oh. Huh. Dimly lit little cocktail bar. My local haunt. <laughs> but like this last Sunday night, fucking it's been a while since I went and hit it, but like went o- went over to LP, they were having a private party, so I'm like, all right, fuck it, I'll go down to Quanga. Uh, buddy of mine was bartending at Las Felas or uh, St. Felix, St. Felix. Uh closed out St. Felix with him and some other people that were there. Uh met one of his friends. Like so the two of us the three of us went over to Elbow Room, closed elbow room t- at two o'clock. And then someone's like, oh, hey, I know an after hours in K-Town. Went to the after hours. Apparently somewhere around 3.30, I called an Uber to go get Thai food. <laughs> it's a little hazy. You don't want Korean barbecue? <laughs> Maybe it's close. No, uh, there's time. there's something that are open that late. Yeah. But I, I, the discussion was like, do we go get Korean barbecue? Or, mm-hmm. And like the pers- people were like, oh, Thai food. So when it hit the crispy pork gang. Never been there. Never been to Crispy Pork King? You live in I the have area. One Korean barbecue place that I go to. Oh, Crispy Pork King's Thai. I know, I know. But oh. like, so I don't like. What's your Korean barbecue spot? It's called Moon Number Two. Mm, don't I know think. it. Moon. Yeah. Moon. Where is it? Uh, you know. <laughs> Google Maps tells me that. <laughs> See, so my, my go to a Korean barbecue is a place called Road to Seoul. Moon Barbecue Number Two. It's on Western, Western, and Maplewood. All right, all right, all right. So just south of Beverly. Yeah, I'm just very picky about my sides, and I like being able to serve my own sides. Because I've been to places where they just bring you like everything, and I don't, I don't want an every, everything, and I feel bad, like wasting it. I hate to break it to you; it's waiting for the next people. It's not, <laughs> it's not going to waste. I guess that's true, but like, and I don't want to like keep at like. Can I get more like mashed potatoes? Can I get more macaroni, please? Yeah, I'm just like more kimchi. Bring more, more kimchi. <laughs> All the kimchi. I never eat kimchi. Why? I don't know. I just never do. I eat a lot of salad. They, like, they have a whole, like, salad bar. I get the salad, and I like, squirt their sauce all over it. And then I get the little rice wrappers, and I eat a lot of bulgogi. Oh, and then cool. I like, like, mashed potatoes and bulgogi and, and raw onion. I have never done that combo in my life. That's so good. Now I'm hungry. And, yeah. and peach soju. And then I'm... So I usually throw it down with the fresh with the fresh soju. Okay. Now I want Korean barbecue. God damn it. I know I'm hungry now. <laughs> damn, it, really, damn it. What sucks is there used to be a mediocre Korean barbecue place across the street. <sighs> I know, I mean, I'm kind of doxing myself at the moment, but it's gone. It's gone. Mm. 
Like they had a fire right before the pandemic. They oh. had a fire. <laughs> oh. But if it was a fire, wouldn't they like be open and better? No, I think that was how they're getting out of their lease. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, it was like no. I mean, meat wise, it hit the spot, but it was just like, oh, there are not nearly as many options as an actual Korean place. This is kind of you know white people's version of Korean barbecue. I do order not much variety, so maybe that would have been okay for me. Yeah, but for being walking distance, it was great. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, it's like, oh, well, I could drive down to K-Town or I could... That's very convenient. Yeah. So I'm sad, I'm sad to see them go. I, I did frequent mm. them on the regular. Me sad. Me too. Because <laughs> I don't want to have to drive down to K-Town <laughs> all the time. Then again, one of my buddies talked me into going to a place in Northridge. So, oh, that's worse. He's like, "Oh, but the, the service is so good." I'm like, "Yeah, the service is good." It's in Northridge. It's in Northridge. I live in Hollywood. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. What are uh, some of your other go-to restaurant spots? I go to El Coyote a lot. Really, I, I've never been, but I hear the food's not great. I mostly drink their margaritas. <laughs> <laughs> their nachos are really good and i like their crispy tacos i don't normally go for food i eat their chips but now i'm into the nachos um i mean that's just the upgrade on the chips yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh el compadre i love el compadre uh the hollywood one oh, yeah. um margaritas flaming margaritas you can't go wrong to go <laughs> Oh, I get them to go. They do their margaritas. They to know go. my order. <laughs> like, hey, bleep, good to see you. <laughs> Two blended Cadillacs. Nice. Yes. See, El Compadre used to be a, like completely a date spot for me. Like, mm. like, oh, hey, we're gonna go. You know, it's super cute. Yeah, it's like, especially if they don't live in Hollywood and don't know any better. Like, mm-hmm. you know. don't know any better. <laughs> well, it's like. You know, part of the first date thing is like, you know, you want to take someone someplace novel and fun. Like, yeah, you want to like burn a good new experience in with them. It's like, oh, well, if we're just going to a place that you've already been to a hundred times, yeah, it's not, then I have to stand out just on my charm, and mm-hmm. that's hard. Mm. Rather just be like, oh, I have a really good memory of this restaurant, and <laughs> Matt was there, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's not what they thought. Maybe you're pretty charming. Aw, 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 aw. Margaritas help. They do help. Compadre is very cute. It's a cute place. Oh, yeah, especially. Little booths are very cozy. uh, Yeah, you got the cozy booths and occasionally the live band. Yeah. Yeah. So where else? Um, I really like Fa. I usually go to Saigon Pearl. Where's that at? It's on Fairfax. Um... It's pretty close to the Grove. Oh. Right. It's just like south of the Grove on Fairfax. It's like kind of, it's like between the tar pits and the Grove. So it's by Sammy's Camera? Is that on Beverly? No, Sammy's is on Fairfax. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Sammy's is on the west side of Fairfax because, you know, got to buy camera gear. <laughs> I like that pho place. Um, I like Taroni. It's Italian. It's across from Pan Pacific Park. Okay. Um, I'm always on the quest for good Italian because I feel like LA has a lot of really bad Italian. Mm. And then a lot of the good Italian is really expensive. Mm. This place is, I mean, it's not cheap, but it's not like crazy expensive it's a toronto restaurant that opened up a uh, location here um i also like for italian la pergolata or something there's one on sunset in silver lake and then there's one in los Feliz. it's very good it's very like home homey kind of italian food um i'm down to try it because like my go-to Italian place closed down. Mm-hmm. I don't. You're further east. You, you may have been there. The the sit down. It was on. That was what it was called. Mm-hmm. No, I've never heard of it. I was on Hollywood near Vermont. Okay. And 
pre pandemic, I guess they had a because they were developing all that shit. They had a problem with their landlord, so they moved and opened a new location on Melrose, and then the pandemic hit, so they just mm. and that place is phenomenal. Like, what was your order? Uh, chicken fettuccine Alfredo with baked mozzarella in the wood fire pizza in the mm. wood fire oven. Like, it mm, it was off menu because really like they they would do the baked mozzarella on like some other pasta dishes. I'm like, yo, can you do it on the fettuccine Alfredo? Like, and they had a wood fire oven for the pizzas that they would bake it in there. It's, Sounds oh. so good. Oh, it's so fucking good. So fucking good. My favorite pasta is gnocchi, oh. specifically like gnocchi bolognese, and my favorite is from Pasta Sisters. And I've only had it on Postmates. Where's I think sisters at? it's like, where is that? It's like South, uh, I don't know what area that's called. Culver City? It's like east of Culver City, I think, but maybe it is Culver City. I mean, the... is there only one location? I don't know. I'm but there, it's so good. Oh my God. Oh my god! Maybe I'm gonna order. That I I'm I'm getting hungry now. Like, fuck. <laughs> Locations. I think I want to do a night on Twitch every week where I just eat food. Oh, they have a mid city location on Pico as well. I that must be the one that I order from. Oh my god, it's so good. My mouth's like watering. Yeah, they closed at eight thirty. So. And of they course. have a they have a location in the Culver City Helms Bakery Complex. Mm, okay. Yeah, that definitely wouldn't be what where I would order from, but they have. Yeah. I've had their lasagna too, which is really good. But their gnocchi bolognese is. Ugh. Now I want Italian, goddamn. <laughs> they are quite closed. I need to put this away. Well, how do you feel about Olive Garden? Um, It's been a very long time since I've ate at Olive Garden. Mm-hmm. But I used to fuck that shit up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. I went. Um, I basically go like once every like six months or like once a year. Like, it doesn't to, happen often. To the valley? I've only been to the one like in, it must be Burbank. Yeah, because it's near the airport. <laughs> I've been to that one like twice. I love their salad. Love their salad. Their breadsticks, I wipe on my pants because they're too salty. <laughs> but then by the time like my food comes, I'm like too full. Which is, I like leftovers, but. I remember back in the day, like, their, their potato soup was phenomenal. Mm. Well, they have, like, a gnocchi soup. It's probably different, but. Probably. Yeah. Part of me, like, wants to go revisit Olive Garden because it's been so fucking long. I also want to go fuck up a Red Lobster because it's been. I've never been to a Red Lobster. How have you never been to a Red Lobster? I mean, I didn't have one in my hometown growing up in Canada. And then, like, in San Diego. I don't even know where there is a Red Lobster. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> well, they're not very plentiful in LA either. Like the nearest ones to here are either Inglewood or in the Valley, mm. like Woodland Hills. Not even close in the Valley. What What do you order there? Lobster or crab? I only had lobster for the first time like recently. I had like I've had like lobster bisque, but I'd never had just like a sea cockroach, like straight up lobster. It was good. It's phenomenal. But like for the price, like it's not that good. Fair. Well, because you know, lobster used to be poor people food. Yeah, like prison food. Prison food or like, you know, what fishermen would just get for themselves. Like. Mm-hmm. And then it became that should become a delicacy. Good. It's like shrimp. Like like the tech like it's good. Yeah, it's good, but it's not like it's not like a hundred dollars good. I'd rather have a steak. Well, it's it's crazy. It's one of those things where like so much shit that was like the scraps and poor people food is so fucking expensive. Now. Lobster, mm. barbecue, like mm. traditional American barbecue is all shit cuts of meat. Yeah. Every last bit of it is shit cuts <laughs> of meat. And that's the reason you gotta cook it low and slow for like fucking two days yeah. to make it edible. Yeah. And now it's like, oh Good. you want a slab of ribs? That'll be like fifty dollars. Like blood says. Oh, I love blood sauce. Blood sauce is really good. Have you ever been to the Horse Thief downtown, though? No. Oh, the Horse, horse Thief? Mm-hmm. Okay. It is open by two Austin transplants. It's a barbecue place. Yeah. Okay. It is in Grand Central Market. It's on the okay. outside outside of Grand Central Market. Like, like if you go to Grand Central Market, they, they have, like, an outdoor patio, and that's that's where the Horse Thief is. Okay. I think they're better than blood sauce. Okay. 
I, I've been fucking with the horse thief for a long time. Like before I even lived in LA, when I've come to town, like I've discovered them and I knew they were legit because it's like if a barbecue place runs out of shit, mm-hmm. that's how you know they're legit. Famous Dave's never runs out of shit. That's questionable. <laughs> when you're like, oh shit. Where famous Dave's Valley. Probably in the Valley. Valley. <laughs> valley. Because it's the suburbs. Yeah. But legit barbecue places, you roll in late. They're like, that's we're out of that. We're out of that. Because the meat's made to. <sighs> yeah. That's how it should be. <laughs> I need to go there. <laughs> you should. It, it's Texas style, like peppery brisket, good pepper bark on the ribs. Oh, it's so good. My favorite Indian place is downtown, but I always just order on Postmates <laughs> is Mr. Masala. But I, there's probably so many other. I just don't know. That's just the place that I ordered from. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with discovering a place you like and be like, yep, that's the spot. I just want orange, or not orange, butter chicken. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Wasn't that invented by an American who died recently? I don't know. Huh. Or it, it might have been butter chicken or uh, chicken tiki masala, like one of the two. Uh-huh. Like the inventor died recently. Oh. R.I.P. Yeah. Thank you for your contribution. Oh, my God. Oh, Whew, that was terrifying. Sorry. I thought my computer was about to crash. Oh, my God. But it's seeming like it's a little unstable. So we're going to probably wrap this motherfucker up before we lose this episode. <laughs> okay. Because that would be horrible. That would be a travesty. We're going to call last call on this motherfucker. And I would do it again. <laughs> well, the, you could do it again anyways. <laughs> no, Riley, you can never come back. I'll have you on mine. Let me know. Cool. But before we do that, we're going to call last call. Riley, where can we find you on the things? Um, Instagram at Riley Nixon. Twitter is Riley Nixon underscore. You can find all of my links at Riley dash Nixon dot com. That has like OnlyFans, Twitch, both of my shops. I sell used dirty underwear if you're interested. Um, yeah, but everything's at Riley dash Nixon dot com. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Riley, it was a pleasure. We will do it again at some point. I'm happy to do your show. Yeah. But in the meantime, you can find me at Matt underscore Slayer on Twitter, Matt Slayer on Instagram, Matt F and Slayer on Facebook, twitch.tv slash Matt F and Slayer. You can find the Patreon home to the video versions, the whole video back catalog, the uncensored video back catalog <laughs> at patreon.com slash Matt Slayer. You can find the podcast at, and now we drink on Twitter and now we drink underscore on Instagram. And until next week, drink up, motherfuckers. Motherfuckers.